tuabudu. We give you the glory. Tunakupatia utukufu. All and praise. Heshima na sifa. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Appreciate one or two people. Furahia mmoja ama mwingine. As you sit in the presence of God. Unapoketi katika uwepo wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Amen. Appreciate our praise team. Tuafurahie kikundi cha sifa. utukufu kwa Mungu. You want more? Je, mnahitaji zaidi? How many want more? Ni wangapi wanataka zaidi? Amen. How many want more? Ni wangapi wanataka zaidi? And you know it's okay to get more. Na ni vizuri ama ni bora kupata zaidi. And be soaked with the word of God. Kuingia katika neno la Mungu. And if you feel you are you have feel too much you just press a little bit. Na ukihisi ni kama umepata zaidi unafinya kidogo. Then you have some space. Na unapata nafasi to get more. Kupata zaidi. Amen. Amen. I want to appreciate our bishop. Tutataka kumfurahia askofu and Reverend Alice. Na Kasisi Aris. Uh, please appreciate help me to appreciate. Tafadhali nisaidieni tuwafurahie. Amen. Amen. For giving us this opportunity. Kwa kutupatia nafasi hii. To just come and be blessed. Tuje tu na tubarikiwe. Amen. Amen. I believe you were invited. Hata kama ulikaribishwa to come and be part of the co-workers. Ukuje na ufanyike sehemu ya watenda kazi. We will be okay. Itakuwa ni vizuri. Uh, because we we feel blessed when we come here. Kwa maana tunabarikiwa tunapokuja hapa. And we go home different. Na tunaenda nyumbani tukiwa tofauti. Going to go back home different. Tutaenda nyumbani tofauti. This is a reservoir where we come. Hapa ni kizima mahala tunakuja. And we are filled with more. Na tunajazwa na zaidi. So that when we get back to our country, ili tukienda mahali tumetoka. Freely we have received. Tumepokea bure. And freely we give away. Na tunapeana bure. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Jina la Bwana lisifiwe. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Do we have a bride in the house? Je, tuko na bibi harusi katika nyumba? Are we getting ready? Je, tunajiandaa? Listen as we are being prepared. Tusikize kama tunapotayarishwa. We must fight every giant that tries to come our way. Ni lazima tupigane na kila kitu ambacho kinakuja mbele zetu. Anything that tries to stop us. Kila kitu ambacho kinajaribu kutuzuia. We are being equipped so that we can deal with it. Tunapewa nguvu ili tupigane nacho. Hallelujah. Amen. So David, kwa hivyo Daudi, he was a blessed man. Alikuwa mtu amebarikiwa. And he walked under an open heaven. Na akatembea chini ya bingu zilizofunguka. Most of the time when he was in the field. Wakati mwingi akiwa kule kichakani. He enjoyed an open heaven. Alifurahia bingu zilizofunguka. And there were things that David was gathering out there. Na kuna vitu ambapo alikuwa anakusanya kule nje. So that when he heard about this giant that I want to talk about. Na wakati alihisikia kuhusu jitu hili ambalo nataka kuzungumzia. David was equipped. Daudi alikuwa amepewa nguvu. And he had what it takes. Na alikuwa na kile kinachohitajika to destroy kuharibu Goliath Goliath I don't know whether you have ever encountered a Goliath in life Sijui kama umepatana na Goliath katika maisha yako I want you to know that they are personal giants Nataka ujue kuna kuwa kuna jitu ambazo ni za kibinafsi Giants that come to try our marriages Majitu ambayo yanajaribu doa zetu Giants that come to try our ministries Majitu yanayojaribu huduma zetu Giants that comes to try our relationship Majitu yanayojaribu uhusiano wetu But you are being equipped in this conference Lakini wewe unapewa nguvu katika kongamano hili so that when you go back to your centers ndio wakati utarudi mahali umetoka and those who will remain here na wale ambao watasaria hapa you can address those giants effectively unaweza ongelesha majitu hayo never say at any time usiwahi sema wakati wowote that you have nothing to fight your enemies with kuwa hauna kile kinachohitajika kupigana na adui Amen. Amen. You have something. Tell somebody you have something. Uko na kitu. You have something. Uko na kitu. Ask somebody what do you have in your hand? Muulize je ni nini uliyo nayo katika mkono? Now listen, to deal with this chance that I want to talk about. 
Leo kuko na majitu haya ambao nataka kunenea. So that the pride will be ready and she will not be distracted. She will not be uh, swayed here and there. She will be ready waiting for her bridegroom. Ili bibi harusi asiangalie hapa na pale atakuwa amesubiri bwana harusi. You have that thing with within you it's available uko nacho katikati yako kiko kapo it's not far away from you haiko mbali kutoka kwako so in uh, uh, first samuel chapter 17 katika kitabu cha samueli wa, wa kwanza 17 we see that, that david uh, killed the giants tunaona kuwa daudi akauua jitu and the one thing that david did na jambo moja daudi alifanya he came and he said from verse 32 he Akas, said do akasema, not, don't worry about this philistine I'm reading from New Living Translation. Ninasoma kutoka edition ya New NIV. Don't worry from this Philistine, David told Saul, I will go. So every bride must be ready to go and face the enemy. Kwa hivyo kila bibi harusi ni lazima akuwe tayari kukumbana na adui. We must be ready. Ni lazima tuwe tayari. Because the enemy, our enemies of faith don't want us to finish in a good way. Kwa maana adui wa imani yetu hawataki tumalizie kwa njia nzuri. The enemy doesn't want you to finish powerfully. Hataki umalize ukiwa na nguvu. He wants you to be disqualified. Anataka urushwe nje. So this Goliath, kwa hivyo huyu Goraya, came and he began to speak to ak- God's people. Akakuja akaanza kuwanenea watu wa Mungu. And they were afraid. Na wakakuwa na uoga. For 40 days and for 40 nights. Siku 40 na, na usiku 40. Angekuja wape changamoto. Send a man out of you. Anasema tuma mtu katikati yenu. All of them were engrossed with the spirit of fear. Wote wakaja wana roho wa uoga. None was able to come out. Hakuna mmoja angejitokeza. Like David. Kama Daudi. And say I'm ready to face this uncircumcised Philistine. Aseme niko tayari kupigana na jitu hili. So when David came, kwa hivyo wakati Daudi alitokezea to where the drama was taking place. Mahali hilo jambo likuwa linafanyikia. He said in verse 32, don't worry, I'll go fight him. Akasema nitaenda nipigane naye. Don't be ridiculous, he was told by Saul there uh, there is no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win you are only a boy Sauri akamwambia Daudi huwezi kukwenda kumwendea mfilisti huyu upigane naye maana wewe ukijana tu Hallelujah Amen and utaenda fast kidogo Hallelujah you are only a boy Na wewe ni kijana tu And he's been a man of war Na huyu ni mtu wa vita since his youth tangu ujana wake but david persisted daudi akamwambia and said I've, I've been taking care akasema nimekuwa nikiangalia of my father's sheep kondoo za baba yangu and goats na, na mbuzi and he said when a lion or a bear na akasema wakati msiba to steal a lamb from uh, the flock anakuja kuimba kondoo kutoka na na kondoo after it ninamuendea with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. Na ninakomboa ule kondoo kutoka kwa mdomo wake. There is always an opportunity for you to be despised by one or two fellows. Kunakuwa na wakati kila sawa wa kushushwa moyo na jambo moja ama lingine. To look at you and tell you that you are not able. Ikuangalie ikuambie hauwezi. Hallelujah. Amen. Never accept what they call you. Usiwahi kubali kile ambacho wanakuita. Tell somebody you are able. Tell that person you are able. Mwambie unaweza. You are able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you can even imagine Unaweza kufanya zaidi ya kile ambacho unafikiria Because greater is he kwa, who lives on the inside of you Kwa maana mkuu ni yule aliye ndani yako You are not baptized with the spirit of lime juice you are baptized with the holy ghost who is full of power Haujajazwa na roho wa uoga umejazwa na roho wa roho mtakatifu aliye na nguvu Hallelujah Amen You are you must be full of confidence. Ni lazima ukuwe na ujasiri. That when you walk wakati unatembea to fulfill your assignment. Kutimiza makusudi yako. You are not alone. Hauko peke yako. The angels of God. Maraika wa Mungu. Goodness and mercy. Wema na fadhili. One on the right side, the other on the left side. Mmoja upande huu mwingine upande mwingine. They are there to help you. Wako pale kukusaidia. To execute 
the assignment of God. They may say you are not able. But they are not the one who decides whether you are able or not. If God says that you are able in the other voice does not make sense. Tell somebody you are able. Hallelujah. Amen. David was told you are not able. And we have the bride of Jesus Christ who are always told you are not able. And yet Jesus said they are able. Mm. Amen. How many here have you been told it's not able? Not able. How many here have you been told it's not possible? Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord will come in Jesus' name. Yesu atakuja katika jina la Yesu. Some of you, some of you after this conference. Wengine wenyu baada ya kongamano hili. Your ministry of power will be unveiled in Jesus' name. Huduma yako ya nguvu itafunuliwa katika jina la Yesu. Your ministry will manifest. Huduma yako itadhihirika. Into another glory. Katika utukufu mwingine. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. The guy who was saying you're not able even try to equip Ule mtu aliyekuwa anamwambia hauwezi akajaribu kumvika. Never, let me tell you, never put on a shoe which is not your size. Usiwahi valia kiatu ambacho si chako. Don't take a weapon that you have not tried before. Usichukue silaha ambayo hujatumia hapo awali. That's why you come here every year ICC so that we equip you. Ndio maana tunakuja hapa kila mwaka kongamano ili tupewe nguvu. Hakuna askari anaenda huko kwa vita bila kufanyiwa training. There is no soldier that goes to war without training. That's why we bring you here. Na ndio maana tunawaleta hapa. Hallelujah. Amen. So Saul tried to give some uh, armor to David. Saul akajaribu kumpatia silaha. The same guy Yule yule mtu saying you are not able. Aliyekuwa anasema hauwezi. He's trying to equip him. Anajaribu kumpatia. It doesn't work like that. Haifanyiki vile. If they don't believe in you. Kama hawakuamini. They cannot empower you. Hawawezi kukupatia nguvu. To get to the place of victory. Kufika mahala pa ushindi. So David refused. Kwa hivyo Daudi akakataa. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. And I want you to go with me. Na nataka tuandamane pamoja. Because David Kwa maana Daudi after he refused Baada ya kukataa there were things that David had picked from the presence of God. Kuna mambo ambayo alikuwa amechukua katika uwepo wa Mungu. When you come to the presence of God to a presence of God like the way we are here today. Ukikuja katika uwepo wa Mungu kama mahala tulipo what do you embrace? Je, ni nini unachochukua? What do you go home with? Unaenda nyumbani na nini? Ama unakuja tu unasikia alafu narudi nyumbani. Or do you just listen and then go at home? What have you gathered? Unabeba nini? Today is Friday, there will be tomorrow Saturday. Leo ni Ijumaa, kesho ni Jumamosi. Every time Kila David wakati was in the presence of God. Wakati Daudi alikuwa katika uwepo wa Mungu. He would always speak something. Ni lazima angesoma kitu that he would use. Ambayo angetumia in his life. Katika maisha yake. Praise the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. <laughs> Look at verse 40. He says that Angalia 40. He says that David Daudi he picked five smooth stones from a stream. Akachukua mawe tano kutoka kwa mto. And he put into his shepherd's uh, bag. Na akaweka katika mfuko wake wa uchungaji. And he took a sling. Na akachukua fim, akachukua and he went across the valley. Na akaenda upande ule mwingine to fight the Philistine. Kupigana na ule mfilisti. David did not even take a, a weapon of mass destruction. Daudi hakuchukua silaha kuu. He took a simple thing. Alichukua kitu rahisi. Now listen, God is preparing his bride today in this conference. Yesu anatayarisha kanisa katika kongamano hili. And he's putting things in our hands that sometimes we despise. Na anaweka vitu katika mikono ambayo wakati mwingine tunadharau. From the stream 
Kutoka kwa ile uzi. Remember the story of Rebecca last night. Kumbuka hadithi ya Rebecca usiku uliyopita. From the stream is where she had a divine encounter. Kutokana na kizima ndipo alipata alipatana. From the stream is where David is picking the five stones. Kutoka kule kwa kisima ndipo anaokota mawe tano. And these are things that David had picked from the presence of God. Na haya ni mambo ambayo alichukua katika uwepo wa Mungu. The first stone represents the Holy Spirit. Jiwe la kwanza the bride of Jesus Christ must be full of the Holy Ghost. Must be refueled every day. With the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God had already come upon David when he was anointed with oil. Roho mtakatifu wa Mungu alikuwa amekuja juu ya Daudi wakati alitiwa mafuta. And remember we were anointed here with oil. Na tukumbuke tulipakwa mafuta. Ah uh, when Samuel uh, Samuel chapter 16 verse 13 Samuel took a horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Samuel akachukua mafuta na akampaka mafuta. And the spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. Na roho wa Mungu akaja juu yake kutoka hiyo siku. When the spirit of God comes upon you. Wakati roho mtakatifu anakuja juu yako. He doesn't come to make you feel nice. Hakuji tu kukufanya uhisi vizuri. He doesn't come to make you shake and nothing happens. Hakuji kukutemesha na hakuna kitu linafanyika. The same power. Hiyo hiyo nguvu. That enables you to speak in tongues. Iliyo kuwezesha kunena kwa ndimi. Is the same power Ndiyo ile ile nguvu that makes you powerful and causes you to prosper Ndiyo inakufanya uwe na nguvu na nguvu na ufanisi That same power ile ile nguvu is the same that causes you to be successful Ndiyo inafanya ufanikiwe Somebody say amen Bwana asifiwe Somebody say yes Yes Without the power of the Holy Spirit Bila nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu Sam of us will settle as substitutes. Wengine wetu tungekaa tu kama vitu ambazo ni za kubadilisha. Without the power of the Holy Spirit. Bila nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. The body of Christ, the bride of Jesus Christ can be hopeless. Mwili wa Kristo, bibi wa kanisa utakuwa bila tumaini. God empowered David through the Holy Spirit. Mungu akapatia Daudi roho it is the Holy Spirit who removed fear from David. It is the Holy Spirit who put different skills in David. Hallelujah. Amen. There are times I used to lose. You won't believe it. Kuna wakati mwingine huwezi amini. Unapoteza kama kifungu ya gari. You lose maybe your key. You can't remember where you put it. Hawezi kumbuka uliweka wapi. You know I learned that I have a Holy Spirit in me. Na nikajifunza kuwa nina Roho Mtakatifu ndani yangu. And I learned to ask him, Holy Spirit, where did I misplace the keys? Na nikajifunza kumuuliza Roho Mtakatifu niliweka wapi funguo. Wewe unafikiri sio muhimu because you think the Holy Spirit is only for laying hands. Maybe you think it is not important kwa sababu unafikiria Roho Mtakatifu ni kwa kuwekelewa tu mikono. Where did I leave my car keys? Na muuliza je niliwacha wapi funguo yangu ya gari? And then he will show me where I left it. Then I went to another level. Every time I went home, I, I would put my car keys inside the right shoe that I would use the following day. Because I used to forget. Simple things. Mambo rahisi. Have you been in a situation where you have bought a, a, a plot Mahali umenunua plot and you misplace the documents among your papers. Na unapoteza makaratasi haujui mahali umeweka. And you are looking for it over a year. Na umetafuta miaka mingi. And you don't know where it is. Na ujui uliweka wapi. The Holy Spirit in you. Roho mtakatifu ndani yako. The Bible says that he is a helper. Biblia inasemuita msaidizi. I know it looks simple to you. You never forget. Najua labda wewe hausahau. You are not the person I'm talking about. I'm talking about myself. Every time I ask him, he 
takes me there. Ananielekeza pale. There are some things you want to hide and you hide them inside a book. Kuna vitu zingine unataka kuficha na unavisicha katikati ya vitabu. They say that in Kenya if you want to hide anything from a Kenyan hide it in a book. Wanasema huku Kenya ukitaka kuficha kitu ficha kwa kitabu. Because Kenyans don't read books. Kwa maana wa Kenya hawasomi. In fact hide it in a Bible. Hata ificha katika Biblia. It can be saved there and secure there. Inaweza kuwa salama hapo. Hide it in the Bible. Ificha kwa Biblia. Praise the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. There is a house that burnt in my city. Kuna nyumba ambayo ilichomeka mahali nimetoka. But the only thing that was recovered in that house. Na kile tu kitu kilisalia katika nyumba. That burnt to ashes. Zingine zikachomeka. Na ilikuwa nyumba ya mhubiri. And it was a pastor's house. It was only the Bible. Ni Biblia pekee. It was intact. Iliachwa vile. Hata iko inanuka moshi. It did not even smell smoke. I don't know how is your Bible. Sijui Biblia yako ikoaje. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your Bible. Show me your Bible. Nionyeshe Biblia yako. Show me your Bible. Nionyeshe Biblia. You came to a conference, show me your Bible. Ulikuja kongamano, nionyeshe Biblia. Amen. Amen. Somebody said clean Bible. Wengine mtu akasema Biblia ambayo ni safi. That a Christian. Mkristo aliye na uchafu. But I see some of you bought your Bible this morning. Lakini naona wengine walinunua Biblia asubuhi. That a Bible? Biblia iliyochafuka. It means that you've been looking at it. Inasema umekuwa ukisoma. So David had picked one stone. Kwa hivyo Daudi alikuwa amechukua chukua jiwe moja. Which represented the Holy Spirit. Inayowakilisha Roho Mtakatifu. Don't focus on the strength of the giant. Usiangalie nguvu ya jitu. But rather focus. Lakini lenga on the secret. Siri behind David sling and the smooth stones iliyokuwa nyuma ya lile jiwe na ile ile tombo aliyotumia focus on the secret behind the tools that this man of god is using lenga siri ambayo iko nyuma ya vile vitu anavyotumia because as a bride of jesus you are anointed to win kwa maana kama bibi harusi umepakwa mafuta ushinde not to be defeated by the enemy usishindwe na adui in the name of jesus tell somebody you Tika will win la yesu Kushinda. You will win again. Tell somebody you will win again. The battle will not be won by the arm of flesh, but it will be won by the spirit. Vita haitapiganwa na nguvu lakini na roho. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you been in a situation Je umekuwa katika hali? You don't know, you don't know what to do. Haujui ufanye nini. And all of a sudden. Na mara tu. You started having some thoughts and some ideas. Unaanza kuwa na mafikira. Let me tell you something. Write that down quickly on a piece of paper. Wacha nikwambie andika katika kwa karatasi. Because some thoughts and some notions that we get is a prompting of the Holy Spirit. Kwa maana mawazo wengine ambayo tunapata ni Roho Mtakatifu anatuambia. If you don't note it down it will be stolen by your enemy immediately. Kama hauta inakiri itaibiwa na adui mara hiyo tu. So the bride of Jesus Christ must learn to have a koinonia with the Holy Ghost. Kwa hivyo bibi wa Kristo ni lazima awe na ushirika wa karibu sana na Roho Mtakatifu. All the time. Kila wakati. So that you know how he speaks to you. Ili ujue jinsi anavyokunenea. Because the way he speaks to me. Kwa maana vile anavyoninenea. It's not the way he speaks to my father. Sivyo anavyonenea babangu. It's not the way he speaks to Emily. Sivyo ananenea kasisi Emily. He speaks to us in a way that we understand him ourselves. Anatunenea kwa njia ambayo tunamuelewa. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. So David. Kwa hivyo Daudi had one stone that represented the Holy Spirit who decided in him Alikuwa na jiwe moja ambalo liliwakilisha Roho Mtakatifu aliyekuwa anaishi ndani yake It was not just a smooth stone from the river that had the power to Hai... bring down the Goliath Haikuwa tu jiwe tu ambayo ilikuwa imetoka katika mto ilikuwa jiwe ambayo ilikuwa na nguvu ya kuangusha Goliath It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit of the living God that was behind the tools that the man of God picked to use Ilikuwa nguvu ambayo itokao kwa Roho Mtakatifu ambayo ilikuwa nyuma ya jiwe ambayo alichukua Hallelujah Amen 
God will use anything that he puts in your hand. Mungu anaweza tumia chochote atakachoweka kwa mikono yako. Praise the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. It was not about the river the, the smoothness of the stone. Si vile jiwe ilikuwa nyororo ama mahali ilichukuliwa. The secret was the Holy Spirit was behind it. Siri ilikuwa ilikuwa na roho mtakatifu. So as a bride of Jesus Christ. Kwa hivyo kama bibi wa Kristo, when we embrace the Holy Spirit, wakati tunakubatia Roho Mtakatifu, he will be with us in our storm situation. Atakuwa nasi katika wakati wetu wa magharibi. He will be with us in our financial lack situation. Atakuwa nasi wakati tunakosa kifedha. He will be with us even when our finances are okay. Atakuwa nasi hata wakati kifedha tuko sawa. He will be with us even when we are in a point of death. Atakuwa nasi hata wakati tumefika mahala pa kufa. Hallelujah. Amen. My wife gives a testimony of how when uh, she was getting our last baby Mke wangu akapeana ushuhuda jinsi wakati alikuwa anajifungua mtoto wa mwisho And it was a breech birth Na mtoto alikuwa hajakaa vizuri And the doctors had given up on her Na daktari walikuwa wameachana na yeye Her cervix had not opened Atumbo yake haikuwa imefunguka And she had labored the whole day Na alikuwa na uchungu usiku usiku mzima And the doctor you know removed the coat Na daktari akatoa ile nguo yake. Closed his office. Akafunga ofisi. But at the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Lakini kwa kunenewa na Roho Mtakatifu. She called the doctor. Akamuita daktari. Told him put your coat on. Akamwambia rudisha nguo yako. We are going to the delivery room. Tunaingia katika chumba cha cha kupata mtoto. And she started praying. Na akaanza kuomba. And the rest is uh, history. The baby came forth. Na ingine ni hadi historia mtoto akazaliwa. It's about the Holy Spirit who was behind her. Ni kuhusu Roho Mtakatifu aliyekuwa naye. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. The second stone represents the past encounters. Jiwe la pili linahusu ule kupatana na Mungu siku ambazo zimepita. David told Saul Daudi akaambia Sauli, You see a bride who is not able to conquer. Unaona mtu ambaye hawezi kupigana. But I am not going alone. Lakini mimi siendi peke yangu. I am not alone. Siko peke yangu. There are situations that happened in the past. Kuna hali ambazo zilitendeka siku za awali. A lion came. Simba akaja. A bear came. Duba ikaja. And I held them with my bare hands. Na nikazishika kwa mikono yangu. The God who was with me. Na Mungu aliyekuwa nami. He gave me courage to destroy them. Akanipa ujasiri kuziangamiza. It doesn't matter how big your miracle was. Haijarishi or how small your miracle was. Haijarishi mujiza wako ulikuwa mkubwa aje ama mdogo aje. The moment you begin to think and to remember about your past uh encounters that God has given you. Mara tu unakumbuka zile ushindi ambayo Mungu amekupatia hapo awali. Something begins to rise up on the inside. Kuna kitu ambacho kinaanza kuinuka kutoka ndani. And that's how you conquer your enemy. Na hivyo ndivyo unashinda adui. Amen. Amen. How many of you have had divine encounters in the past? Je, ni wangapi wamesikia kuhusu kupatana kwa kiungu? Or other I'm saying how many were given test miracles by God in the past. Ni wangapi walipewa miujiza hapo awali? One time in our house. Wakati moja kwa nyumba yetu. We didn't have anything to eat. Hatukuwa na chochote cha kula. And that night. Na usiku huo. We shared a bowl of vegetables and one potato. Tukashiriki chakula sahani moja na kiazi moja. Can I say it? Je, niseme. And me and Emily didn't eat. Na mimi mimi na Kasisi hatukula. Not because we wanted to fast. Si kwa sababu tulitaka kufunga. But we didn't have. Lakini hatukua. But let me tell you God will never leave you or forsake you. Lakini nikwambia Mungu hata kuacha hata kupungukia. Our children ate Watoto the wetu wakala was, and they went to sleep. Wakaenda wakalala. Before we went to bed. Kabla tuende kulala. Some 
guys who were on a honeymoon entered our house. Watu ambao walikuwa honeymoon wakaingia kwa nyumba yetu. They had just married, gone on a honeymoon. Walikuwa wameoana, wameenda honeymoon. They finished their honeymoon. Lakini kabla wamalize honeymoon, God commanded them to come back and to come to our house. Mungu akawaamlisha warudi na wakuja kwa nyumba yetu. And we welcomed them quickly. Tukawakaribisha haraka. It was late at night. Kulikuwa usiku sana. Thank God. God sent them at the right time. Shukuru Mungu kwa maana aliwatuma wakati unaofaa. And we showed them where to sleep. Tukawaonyesha mahali pa kulala. And we slept. Na tukalala. When we woke up in the morning. Wakati tuliamka asubuhi. We were woken up by the smell of bacon in our house. Tuliamshwa na harufu mzuri ya bacon kwa nyumba. We were woken up by smell of sausages in our kitchen. Tukaamshwa na harufu mzuri ya sausages. And you know if you're a man of God you think God this is a supernatural miracle. Na kama wewe ni mtu wa Mungu unafikiria huu ni muujiza wa kiungu. We discovered that this couple woke up very early and they went to the supermarket. Tukatambua kuwa waliamka asubuhi mapema wakaenda kwa duka. When I remember such a miracle. Wakati nakumbuka muujiza kama huo. Whether I have money in the pocket, whether my bank is empty, I don't fear. Because I know the one who supplied yesterday, he is the same yesterday, today and forever. Sio gopi kwa maana najua aliye nipatia jana, ndiye yule yule jana, leo kesho na milele. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. One time. Si wakati mmoja. The devil afflicted me with mums. Shetani akafanya nipate ile mums. Siku ugonjaka wakati nilikuwa mtoto. Na hile ingine ya tuzudoi na hituwa jemi. Chicken pox. I didn't get it when I was a small boy. Chicken pox. Siku pata wakati nilikuwa mdogo. At the age of 40. Nikiwa na meaka arubaine. I'm in Nyeri. I'm doing my ministry. Niko Nyeri. Niko katika huduma. I get kufimba. And I get the chicken pox. Ninapata ile mums na napata chicken pox. And I hear a voice telling me I have come I will kill you. Nasikia sauti ikiniambia nimekuja na kuja kukuua. And I said you cannot kill me I'm a servant of God. Nikasema uwezi niwa mimi ni mtumishi wa Mungu. The devil told me I will bring another pastor I will kill you. Shetani akasema nitakuja na nitakuua. Let me tell you from that day. Kutoka wakati huo. The dawas I had been given by a doctor in my church I threw them away. Zile dawa nilikuwa nimepewa na daktari nikatupa. I said if I die I will not be killed by this disease. Nikasema kama nitakufa siuawi na ugonjwa huu. If I die is because my time has come and God you have called me home. Kama nakufa ni kwa sababu wakati wangu umefika na umeita nyumbani. I remember such a miracle. Nikikumbuka muujiza kama huo. past transformation that God gave me. Even when I hear of evil report, I will not believe in it. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. The second stone represents past encounters with God. David had proven the power of God. Daudi alikuwa amethibitisha nguvu za Mungu. In his past life. Katika maisha ya awali. And sometime. Na wakati mwingine. Some of you here. Wengine wetu hapa. Have tremendous victories in the past. Mko na ushindi mwingi katika siku zimepita. You must use that to testify. Ni lazima utumie hiyo kushuhudia. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that. Napenda hiyo. Last night Joy came running to me. Alikuja akikimbia kwangu. She said there is somebody who has received a telephone call. Na akasema kuna mtu ambaye amepigiwa simu. That on Monday that person must report to work. Kuwa Jumatatu ni lazima aende kazini. Amen. Hata wewe unaweza receive telephone call. You can also receive a telephone call. Amen. Amen. Hata uhuru anaweza kupigia simu. You can even be called by the president. Amen. You see some of you you only select the kind of people you want to call you. Wengine wenyu mnachagua wale watu ambao mnataka wawapigie simu. Kwa sababu mnawajua na wako kwa simu yenyu. Because you know them and they're in your contact. Amen. Amen. Some of you are very very tough. You never even pick strange phone. Wengine hata hampokei simu ambazo hamjui. Lakini labda hiyo strange phone you don't want to pick ni APA wa president. But labda the, the telephone call ambayo hauchukui you're being called by the personal assistant to the president. Hallelujah. 
Amen. One time at a phone came. I didn't know this number. Wakati moja nikapigiwa simu na sikuwa najua hiyo nambali. And I had come from prayer in the morning. Na nilikuwa nimetoka kwa maombi ya subuhi. And in the morning I had seen an open vision. Na katika asubuhi nilikuwa nimeona maono. I had seen myself praying before President Moi. Nilikuwa nimejiona nikiomba mbele ya president. And when I told some boys in my church they laughed at me. Na wakati niliambia watu kanisani wakanichekelea. Msichekelee bishop akiwaambia vitu zingine. Don't laugh at the bishop when he tells you some things. They laughed at me. Wakanichekelea. At I am standing before the president. Kuwa nimesimama mbele ya president. And I'm praying. Na ninaomba. And we go to our house. Tukaenda kwa nyumba. And before we even settled. Na kabla hata hatujatulia. Our telephone rang. Simu ikalia. And said, "Are you Pastor Kamere?" Ikauliza wewe ni mchungaji Kamere. President Moi is in town. Rais Moi yuko hapa mjini. At Kafiroine. Pale Kafiroine. Before they open the show. Kabla wa waanzishe ile show. They want you to pray. Tunataka uombe. And I said, I have not, not even changed. Nikasema hata sijabadilisha. They told me, they asked me, what is your car registration number? Wakaniuliza gari yako registration number ni gani? Ilikuwa ki 505 an accident that was about to happen. Wakaniuliza registration number. They asked me the registration number. Nikawapatia. And I gave them by the time I was getting to the showground. Wakati nilikuwa nafika pale showground. Gari yangu ilikuwa nafunguliwa mlango kama ni ni a presidential escort. The door was opened as though it was for the president. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't ignore some calls that come your way. Usipuuze simu ambazo zinapigwa. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Tell somebody pass encounters. Mwambie mambo ambayo yamepita. David knew Daudi akajua that victory was possible. Kuwa ushindi uwezekana. And that's what we want to assure the bride of Christ. Na ndivyo tunataka tuhakikishie bibi wa Kristo. That victory is possible. Kuwa ushindi unawezekana. He did not focus on the size of Goliath. Hakuangalia upande wa Goliath. He did not focus on the size of his armor. Hakuangalia vile alikuwa na silaha kuu. Because David had faced giants before. Kwa maana alikuwa amekumbana na majitu awali. But he focused. Lakini alilenga on his maker who has been with him out there. Kwa muumba wake ambaye alikuwa naye huko nje. Focus on your maker. Lenga muumba wako. He's taken you out before he will take you out again. Amekupeleka nje atakupeleka tena. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Jesus also defeated the enemy Satan. Yesu Kristo pia akashinda adui shetani. And he just needed to speak the word. Na alihitaji kunena neno. When the devil tempted him. Wakati shetani alimtesa. Ali, ali turn the stones to bread. Geuza mawe yawe mkate. He just said man shall not live on bread alone. Akasema mtu haishi kwa mkate tu. But man can also live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Lakini anaishi kutoka kwa neno ambalo linatoka kwa kinywa cha Mungu. Hallelujah. Amen. He took him up he said if you worship me I'll give you everything that you see. Akamchukua akasema ukiniabudu nitakupatia kila kitu unaona. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus did not do that. Na Yesu hakufanya hivyo. The third stone. Jiwe la tatu. In the life of uh, David it represented the word of God. Katika maisha ya Daudi inawakilisha neno la Mungu. David got his courage and his confidence from the word of God. Daudi akapata ujasiri na nguvu kutoka kwa neno la Mungu. Look at 40, uh, verse 45 and verse 46. David replied to the Philistines, Daudi You akajibu, come to me with a sword, you come to me with a spear, you come to me with a javelin and after all they are being carried. That one is not in the Bible, is my paraphrase. Hiyo ni mimi ninasema haiko katika Biblia. You come to me with those weapons unajia kwangu na hizo siraha but i come to you in the name of the lords of heaven lakini naja kwako katika jina la mungu wa mbinguni that's how the bride of jesus christ should encounter should confront the enemies that come against them hivyo ndivyo mke wa kristo anafaa kukumbana na adui ambao ambao wanakuja you come to me with your abilities but i come to you in the name of the lord unanikujia na hizo zote lakini nakujia na neno la mungu David had the word of God. Daudi alikuwa na neno la Mungu. As a third stone. Kama jiwe la tatu. And listen to me ICC. Na nisikize. 
Congamano. ICC conference. Congamano ICC. The answer to our complex situation. Jibu ya maswali yetu ambayo ni ngumu can be solved by the word of God. Yanaweza suruhishwa na neno la Mungu. The answer to your complex issues. Jibu ya mashida zako can be solved by the word of God. Inaweza suruhishwa na neno la Mungu. The answer that you need Jawabu ambalo unahitaji is in the word of God. Iko katika neno la Mungu. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. It's in the word of God. Iko katika neno la Mungu. I find my answers there. Ninapata jawabu zangu hapo. You can find your answers there. Unaweza pata jawabu hapo. Amen. Amen. So that's the stone he had. Hiyo ndio jiwe ambayo alikuwa nayo. He picked it from the presence of God. Alichukua katika uwepo wa Mungu. Down the stream, the place of the activity of the Holy Spirit. Pale chini mtoni mahala kuna uwepo wa Mungu. The fourth stone represents big vision that David had. Jiwe la ine linawakilisha maono kuu ambayo alikuwa nayo. The bride of Jesus Christ must have a vision for the future. Bibi harusi wa Kristo ni lazima awe na maono ya siku zijazo. You must have a vision for the future. Ni lazima uwe na maono ya siku zijazo. Because God has a great future for you. Kwa maana Mungu ako na siku zijazo kuu. You must not dwell on the negative things that are happening right now. Haufai uishi katika mambo mbaya ambayo yanaendelea sasa. You are yesterday is already in the archives. Jana imepita. But listen, the future is great. Lakini kesho ni kuu. And the future is in the hands of God. Na kesho yako iko katika mikono ya Mungu. Your future is great. Tell somebody your future is great. Kesho yako ni kuu. Don't regret. Usigairi. Of things you didn't do yesterday. Mambo ambayo haukufanya jana. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't regret. Usigairi. Abraham was 90 years old. Ibrahimu alikuwa na miaka 90 when he began to nurture his family wakati alianza kulea familia amen amen and he was successful na alifanikiwa amen because some of us we regret kwa maana wengine wetu tunagairi you're getting old and you have done nothing unaanza kuzeeka na labda haujafanya chochote listen to me jesus just needed 3 years nikisikize yesu alihitaji miaka 3 tu to execute his ministry kufanya huduma yake 3 years miaka 3 everywhere you go in the world kila mahali unaenda duniani he is remembered for a ministry he executed for only 3 years alifanya kwa miaka 3 tu Whatever you did not do in the last 15 years you can do in the next 3 years. Kile ambacho haukufanya miaka 15 iliyopita unaweza fanya na miaka 3. Whatever you are not able to do the last 10 years you can do in the next 10 months. Kile ambacho hukuweza kufanya miaka 10 iliyopita unaweza fanya na miezi 10. You don't understand what I'm saying. Hauelewi ninachosema. Whatever whatever limited you yesterday It will be a stepping stone for your tomorrow miracle. Kilicho kuzuia jana kitakuwa mahala pako pa kusimama kesho. Don't regret of Us, things that never work. Usigairi mambo ambayo haikutenda kazi. David had a vision for the future. Daudi alikuwa na maono ya siku zijazo. He knew he had been chosen to be a king over Israel. Alikuwa anajua amechaguliwa kuwa mfalme juu ya Israeli. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. I want to say this again. Nataka nirudie. That we must think. Kuwa ni lazima tufikirie. Global. Tufikirie kwa mawazo ya kidunia. Don't just think kasarani. Usifikirie tu hapa kasarani. Don't just think nyeri. Usifikirie tu nyeri. Think global. Fikiria dunia. Kama una passport, and if you do not have a, your passport it takes less than 10 days in our country today to get a passport inachukua siku ambazo hazipiti kumi kupata passport tell somebody think global mwambie fikiria dunia yote don't just think kenya usifikirie tu inchi yetu ya kenya god has said in his word 
go ye into all the nations. Mungu akasema katika neno enda katika nchi zote. Listen, I don't need a visa to go to America. Sihitaji visa niende kule Amerika. I just need them to agree with me that I'm going. Nataka tu kukubaliana na mimi ati kuwa ninaenda. I have been given visa by God. Nimepewa visa na Mungu. To go into all nations. Kuenda katika dunia yote. That's already there. Iko hapo tayari. The first time I went to America I remember I had a guy say, "Andoa ya Neuru, these guys are bad." Wakati wa kwanza nilienda kule kwa America na basi nilisikia wakisema hawa watu ni wabaya. The first day they were saying, "Oh these guys are bad." Hawa watu wa Kenya ni wabaya. They will not give you visa. I ran away from them. Hawatakupatia visa nikapotea. We were queuing. I ran away from them. Tulikuwa tunapanga foleni nikapotea. Because I didn't want to hear what they were saying. Sikutaka nisikie wanachosema. Because me God had already told me I'll go to America like the way I go with the matatu from Nairobi to Nyeri. Kwa maana mimi Mungu alikuwa ameniambia nitakuwa naenda America kama vile ninaingia matatu kwenda pahali popote. Have a global vision. Kuwa na maono ya dunia yote. Because you're a bride of Jesus Christ. Kwa maana wewe ni mke wa Kristo. Amen. Amen. Now I want to go to South America. Sasa nataka kwenda South America. Daddy, if you are going there, I can carry the bag for you. Kama unaenda huko naweza kubebea mfuko. Yeah, I'll carry the bag. Nitakubebea mfuko. David could see far. Daudi alikuwa anaona mbali. Usione tu, usione tu pale mji wako pale pale pale. Don't just look at where you come from. Fungua macho bana. Open your eyes. That's the next stone David had. Hiyo ndio jiwe la ile ambayo alikuwa nayo. The vision of the future. Maono ya siku zijazo. God is saying in the book of Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call unto me and I will answer thee. Mungu anasema katika Yeremia 33 na 33. I'll show you great and mighty things. Niita na nitakujibu nikuonyeshe mambo makuu. Which you did not know. Ambayo haujui. Stones represent first the Holy Spirit upon David. Mawe inawakilisha Roho Mtakatifu ndani ya Daudi. The word of God. Neno la Mungu. And past encounters. Mambo ambayo umepatana nayo hapo awali. And now the vision for the future. Na maono ya siku zijazo. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. I loved what I had from Dr. Mungai. Napenda kile nilisikia kutokana kutoka kwa Dr. Mungai. Dr. Francis Mungai. Dr. Francis Mungai. He said there were eight in the family. Alisema kuwa walikuwa nane katika familia. Raised by a single mother. Wamelewa na mama pekee. Next room was a bar. Nyumba ambayo ilipishikana nao ilikuwa bar. And the noise from the bar. Na ile makelele kutoka ile bar. Never distracted him. Haikumzuia to read his books. Kusoma because he had a vision for the future. Kwa maana alikuwa na maono ya siku zijazo. Don't allow anything to stop you. Usiruhusu chochote kikusimamishe. After this conference. Baada ya kongamano. Don't allow. Usiruhusu. Praise the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. Tell somebody I will not allow. Mwambie sitaruhusu. Anything to stop me. Chochote kinisimamishe. Usiruhusu. I refuse to entertain the bitterness of my father. Who have never seen. Ambao hawajaona. I have never seen. Sijawahi ona. And I'm praying that one of these days. Na ninaomba kuwa siku moja. Because now I'm living with my mother in my house. Kwa maana sasa naishi na mamangu nyumbani. And I'm praying for her. Na ninamuombea. And I'm loving her even more. Na ninampenda hata zaidi. That she will tell me one of these days. Kuwa siku moja ataniambia. That you know what Jack? Kuwa unajua nini ya skofu? I want to talk about serious things. Nataka tuongee mambo ambayo ni ya maana sana. About your father. Kuhusu baba yako. But right now he cannot affect me. Lakini saa hii haezi kunidhuru. Amen. Amen. I've dealt with it and I'm over it. Nimeishughulikia na nimeishinda. Unajua unaweza hata pata baba ambaye atakuletea shida mingi zaidi. Because you know you can even get a father who will bring so many complicated things. He's a friend of mine. Kuna rafiki yangu. 
his father chased his father chased the mother away many years ago baba yake akafukuza mama yake siku mingi ambazo zimepita and then this boy you know the way you love a father you honor him the bible tells us to do that na unajua huyu kijana jinsi tunajua biblia inatuambia tuheshimu baba zetu na tuwapende tuwaheshimu until the young man started building a house for the mother hadi wakati huyu kijana akaanza kujengea mama yake nyumba then the real thing started coming from the mouth of a father na ile na ikaanza kutoka katika kinywa cha baba and the man said forget it i love my mom i must build a house for her akasema achana na hiyo mimi napenda mama yangu na ni lazima nimjengee nyumba ningao ngapi wanapenda mama wao hapa how many of us love your mothers na daddy zao hapa and your fathers hallelujah amen what is this that you want to do to your daddy je ni nini hii ambayo unataka kufanyia baba yako the holy spirit can enable you to do it roho mtakatifu anaweza kukuwezesha kufanya glory to god utukufu kwa mungu finally mwisho david's uh, the fifth stone represented the faith Jiwe la tano likuwa linawakilisha imani. David's heart was full of faith. Roho ya Daudi ikajawa na imani. David said I will go in verse 32. Daudi akasema nitaenda. And fight this man. Na nipigane na hu, na hili Let jitu. No man fail you. Kusiwe na mtu ambaye atanishusha moyo. Think about others. Fikiria wengine. Think about others. Fikiria wengine. David had faith from the word go. Daudi alikuwa na imani kutoka mwanzo. In verses 28 to 30, he rejected his brother's rejection. Akakataa kukataliwa na dugu yake. You know, his brothers rejected him. Unajua dugu wao walimkataa. Walisema anajionyesha. They said he want to show off. Huh? You're bragging. Anataka kujionyesha. You've come taking care of those few flocks you want to show yourself here umetoka kule kwa wale kondoo unataka kujionyesha david turned away from their rejection daudi akageuka akaachana na kukataliwa and spoke to another person akanenea mtu mwingine amen amen we were taught here by dr ron about words that comes with a lot of heart tuliongeleshwa kuhusu maneno ambayo yanakuja yakiumiza kama mtu anataka kukuhurt turn away from him and go to another person if someone want to hurt you geuka uende kwa mtu mwingine and listen it's not a disrespect if they are doing that to you turn away and go to another person nasikiza si ati unakosa kumpa heshima lakini geuka uende kwa mwingine i say turn away and go to another person nilisema geuka uende kwa mwingine turn away and go to another person geuka uende kwa mtu if mwingine they are not willing to give you life support kama hawataki kukupatia kukushikilia god has risen another man another woman to give you support. Mungu ameinua mtu mwingine ili akushikilie. Why am I giving you all these stories? Je, ninawapatia hadithi hizi zote kwa nini? So the bride of Jesus Christ. Ndio bibi harusi wa Kristo. Who stand firm. Atasimama imara. And be able to fight every giant. Na apigane na kila jitu. That comes their way. Ambayo inakuja inakukujia. How many here have overcome a giant? Je, ni wangapi hapa wameshinda majitu? How many how many of you have overcome a giant? Ni wangapi wameshinda jitu? How many how many show me again? Nionyeshe tena. Yeah. Me and Emily we have overcome one giant. Mimi na Kasisi Emily tumepigana na jitu moja. I even wrote a paper in my uh, theological seminary. Hata nikaandika katika wakati nilikuwa ninasoma. It was in a Christian uh, uh, leadership unit. Ilikuwa ni masomo ambayo ni ya uongozi ya Ukristo. We were told to you know write about a certain Goliath that you encountered. Wakati tuliambiwa tuandike kuhusu Goria ambaye umepatana naye. Our giant was our ministry. Jitu letu ililikuwa ni huduma yetu. Uh, one day we we bought a, we were going to buy a piece of land na wakati moja tulikuwa tunaenda kununua shamba and we were here in Nairobi doing a, a conference like this na tulikuwa Nairobi tukiwa na kongamano kama hili and the guy who was selling us the piece of land mtu ambaye alikuwa anatuuzia ile shamba he called us akatupigia simu and he said you've not been able to pay me money akasema hamjaweza kunilipa pesa and i need money now nahitaji pesa sasa and you know what he did na unajua alifanya nini? He shut down our tent. 
akaangusha zile tent zetu akazifunga zile tent akaweka askari around it and he brought policemen we are in Nairobi we are doing a conference tuko Nairobi tunafanya kongamano you know what i did na unajua nilifanya nini i called my leaders nikawaita viongozi and i told them na nikawaambia you can even worship god under a tree mnaweza hata aabudu chini ya mti i said go to the nearby school nikasema endeni katika shule iliyo karibu tell the headmaster that i have sent you na muambie mkuu kuwa nimekutuma and tell him we shall have worship there until god provides na muambie kuwa tutaabudu hapo hadi wakati Mungu atapeana. And for three months. Na kwa miezi tatu. We are given a premise by a school. Tulikuwa tumepewa mahali pa kuabudu na shule. And one day this young girl came and told me, "Pastor, we are suffering here and my uncle has a piece of land." Na siku moja mdada mmoja akakuja akaniambia kuna ndugu yangu ako na shamba. My uncle has a piece of land. Mjomba wangu ako na shamba. I saw the land. Wakati niliona hiyo shamba and we entered there na tukaingia hallelujah amen this politician had shut our shut church completely hawa watu wa siasa walikuwa wamefunga kanisa kabisa that time our church had hit 800 members wakati huo tulikuwa na washirika 800 praise the name of jesus bwana asifiwe and when he did that i saw myself i had reached right on the top i was just a few meters to get to the to the pinnacle and God asked me there is this conflict what are we going to do I told God I'm willing to go back to zero Na wakati huo nilikuwa karibu nimefika kilele nikauliza Mungu nitafanya nini nikaambia Mungu niko tayari kuanza chini Na ninajua kwa nguvu zako unaweza kunirudisha pale juu And in those three months Na hiyo miezi tatu I was telling people we are here Nilikuwa naambia watu tuko hapa but we are going there lakini tunaenda pale and what we are going to build there na kile ambacho tutajenga pale will glorify god there kitatukuza mungu pale nations will come to glorify him there mataifa yatakuja kumtukuza pale so what do you have in your hands kwa hivyo uko na nini katika mikono what do you have in your hands uko na nini don't tell me you have nothing usiniambie hauna chochote david had the five stones daudi alikuwa na mawe tano and lesson learned from david nafunzo ambayo tunasoma kutoka kwa daudi is that he was not put off ni kuwa hakufungiliwa by rejections he went through na kukataliwa ambao alikataliwa he was not put off hakufungiliwa by ill treatment that he went through na vile alishogulikiwa na watu vibaya he was not put off hakusimamishwa god is not looking for a ability but he is looking for availability in his bride mungu haangali uwezo anaangalia kujipeana katika mwili wa kristo god is not looking for availability in his bride he is looking for availability mungu haangali ability not ability but availability haangali uwezo lakini jinsi utakavyojipeana hallelujah amen Did you know that human beings look at outward things? Je, ulijua kuwa watu wanaangalia kile ambacho kinaonekana? But God looks at the heart. Lakini Mungu anaangalia moyo. I want you to stand up on your feet. Nataka usimame. And I want you to be to get hold on one person. Nataka ushike mkono wa mwenzako. In the next two minutes I want you to begin to pray for that person. Dakika mbili nataka uanze kuanza kuombea rafiki yako. That they will discover things that God has put in their hands. Kuwa watatambua mambo ambayo Mungu ameweka katika mikono yao. It may not be a stone like David had. Inaweza kuwa labda si jiwe kama Daudi. But what are things? Lakini ni vitu gani? That God has put in your life. Ambazo Mungu ameweka katika maisha yako. That reminds you. Ambazo inakukumbusha. Of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu. What are things in your life? Ni mambo gani katika maisha? That reminds you. Ambayo inakukumbusha. Of past victories. Mambo ambayo yamepita ya ushindi. God has given you. Ambayo Mungu alikupea. What are things in your life? Ni mambo gani katika maisha yako? That reminds you. Ambayo yanakukumbusha. That every time. Kwa kila wakati. You get involved. Unakusika. In a Bible study. Katika kusoma Biblia. Friends. Some things begin to happen. Kuna mambo yanaanza kufanyika. What are things in your life? Ni mambo gani katika maisha yako? That reminds you. Ambayo yanakukumbusha. Of a great vision. 
that God has put in your heart the vision for your future the vision for your ministry the vision for your children the vision for your neighborhood the vision for your lunatic the vision for your country the vision for Africa the vision for Europe the vision for America the vision for the nation of the earth the vision for the kingdom of God what is that thing that can get you to a place of where you are stirred up so that you can begin to work on your vision what is that thing my brother what is that thing my sister that reminds you of the faith of God that God has placed within you pray for that person now that those things will not be hidden anymore they will not be hidden anymore they will not be hidden anymore those are the things that equip you those are the things that equip you those are the things that equip you to win your battle to win your battle I declare that every battle every battle every war represented here is already war in the realm of the spirit the battle is war by the bride of Jesus Christ because no weapon that is fashioned against the bride that will prosper in the name of Jesus every darkness be ye removed every darkness be ye removed instead of death I prophesy life instead of curses I declare the blessings of God in the name of Jesus I declare the peace of God peace from the north peace from the south peace from the east peace from the west in the name of Jesus and the bride of Jesus Christ they are more than a conqueror they are victorious forevermore in the name of Jesus come on don't stop pray for that person 